Check, check, check. Zoe, go lay down. Hola. <laughs> Damn. Anyway. You got me a cute couple, you right? Do, 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 do a little two-finger joint. Yay. <laughs> oh, my God. You're cheesy. about today is how to break into expediting as a trucker i there's a lot of information out there about trucking there's not a lot of information about expediting there is a lot of information about expediting in like a van like a sprinter van mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of information out there as far as just expediting right like in the expedited truck like what we're in where you get the full-size mattress the rv setup and all that shit there's not a lot of info out there about that, so hopefully that's what this channel will help you with. That being said, let's do the damn thing. So, first things first, why did we choose expediting? Damn. Um, well, it was easy. It was relaxing for me. Um, I've been looking at it for a while because you get a great living space. You still get paid about the same if not maybe a little bit more than your average so-called trucker out there and when i say average i mean your entry level in a semi truck out on the road three four weeks straight cramped up in a, a, a you know a six by eight foot space that you have a twin size mattress in the back so i wanted something that was a better quality of life on the road a better living space itself because you know as you see we have two full-grown adults we also have two dogs. Um, they are each, you know, I've got a shepherd and then I have a Carolina lab mix. So essentially, <clears throat> I needed space for, you know, four people in a truck and still be comfortable. And then that's what expediting offers. You know, the vehicle that we have, it's essentially, uh, it's a Freightliner M12. Um, that's basically a box truck with a super sleeper on the back and then a 20 foot box on the back of that. So definitely worth it. And, you know, I have six years of driving experience. She has what, three months. Yeah, about three months. Yeah. And here's the thing. If you are somebody, because granted, you're somebody who is also a trucker or you've been thinking about trucking and you're not exactly sure what type of uh, niche within trucking to dive into. Maybe you're used to drive in, maybe you're used to refer, maybe you're used to flatbed. He has experience in all of those. And so mm -hmm. kind of with, with that experience, especially when it came to leasing, we were able to see that you essentially make more money in trucking the more niche you're able to become. Like, if you know, if you see those truckers that are out there probably hauling big old, uh, like hauling other trucks, hauling cars, hauling cows, you know, or even doing, um, you know, box truck, et cetera, those seem to be the areas where you're actually able to make the most money. So we've been able to see both from a, an owner operator, like a lease operator standpoint, and mm -hmm. from a company standpoint, that it's more economical to go the expediting route that we've right. seen, you know, to kind of pivot into that particular niche than it is to do anything else right. that we've seen. And like going back to one of the reasons why is that even though I've been in several of those niche fields, box trucks is something that it's always piqued my interest because it's always been easier. It's an easier uh entry level of experience like you don't need experience to do this you don't really need training to do this you know we have we both have class a's but you don't need a class b don't be lazy get your class a but that being said it doesn't it's not hard doing this when i say that like you like i said three months of experience you don't have any super training on where you can mess up you don't have to worry about trying to haul permits and everything like that so this was an easier field to get into, to get niche, because I, like you said, I've driven company, I've leased trucks, I've owned my own trucks. It's just a lot. It was just a lot less headache, a lot less hassle. I'm making the same money as a full size niche roll semi truck with less entry level expenses. Just that, to, that's really what it boils down to. Just to provide a little bit of background, so what we've been able to see as um, 
essentially seeing him as an uh, a lease operator, owner operator, and coming from three and a half years plus of entrepreneurship, we've brought in probably about a million dollars, you know, in total, all encompassing. And so in this particular case, expediting just seemed to be the way to freaking go. Mm-hmm. With that being the case, we kind of want to pivot and talk a little bit about expediting versus general freight. So with general freight, like how exactly is it when it comes to general freight and the behaviors of the 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 tone that people sh- are used to when it comes to general freight versus expediting? Oh, man. So general freight is the hurry up and wait game. They want you to run and get there as soon as possible. But if you're early, you got to wait for your appointment. If you're late, they might work you in. And they don't give a damn about you. Um, you know, it's rush, 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 go, go, go. They they just don't care. However, expedited is an on-call situation, right? So at most, we might get the next load out. That's it. We don't get three or four loads back to back. We literally go, we deliver, and then we sit. You know, after we deliver, we go sit and wait for the next load to come in. So we do have a lot more downtime than average. And we also have a lot more deadhead. Like with a semi truck, your deadhead, you want it to be less than 100 miles, ideally. That's usually what they do. They'll say a 250 mile range, and that's about it. However, over here, with so many different routes that you can go, whether it be uh, what we would consider general freight over here mm-hmm. and expedited, which is last minute freight, things someone needs shipped right now, medicines, things like that. You also have like life sciences, which is pharmaceuticals, uh, medicinal things. You have hazmat, you have DOD loads, that's where it's at. We're, we're just dropping a little hint for later. But DOD, for those of you who don't know, it's Department of Defense. I had no idea what the hell that was. Okay, so <laughs> Department of Defense loads. All of those loads, you are an on-call driver for. So those loads get picked up as needed, meaning I could call you today, hey, I have this load that you can pick up, it pays... You know, twenty nine hundred dollars all in, including tolls, fuel surcharge, and everything like that. But it's a five and a half hour deadhead to get there, and then you're gonna run three hundred miles after you pick up. That's not bad. Versus I mean, a semi truck, you know, where it's like, hey, here's the next three loads. Don't miss an appointment, or you're you're sitting for eight nine hours waiting to get unloaded. And you're actually maxing out the weight of your truck. And of course, the heavier you are. The more fuel you use, the more fuel you use, the more fuel you have to pay for, you know, the slower you are, etc. Exactly. Like, and to give a great example of that or a great breakdown, on average, a semi-truck is going to haul 40,000 pounds or more. They try and hit you with that 45 to 46 range, and the cost for that is usually about a dollar and 40-something cent per mile cost for, uh, operating cost for the truck itself. Over here... You're only going to haul like 5,000 pounds. Granted, you're a smaller vehicle. These trucks can max out at about ten to 15,000 pounds. But a lot of your loads are going to be 5,000 pounds or less, at least on the paperwork. Now, every load that we've hauled so far, the paperwork has said it was like somewhere between two to 3,000 pounds. The actual load has been like 80 pounds, maybe 1,000 pounds, if that. So... Mm-hmm. That shows you right there just the di- the level of difference, and then the fuel, the the um, uh, what's it called? The fuel mileage that these trucks get is much better than what a semi truck gets, just because of weight and everything like that. But we're paying the same price in fuel, so it's like we're still we're each putting in the the three dollars and seventy five cents per gallon, you know, fuel costs. But because we're teaming, so the truck doesn't shut down and run, we have an APU and everything like that, uh, a better electrical system, the truck gets better fuel mileage because we're not wasting fuel sitting still, and we're not wasting fuel because we're so heavy. So Mm -hmm. that's definitely one thing that's great for it. Another thing also that we've seen is that when when you run general freight, no matter what it is that you run, whether it's flatbed or... Um, a box truck, a reefer, etc. You usually deal with brokers, and brokers are middlemen, right? They're the they're the people who speak to the shippers, they speak to the customers, etc. And they just let you know it's this amount of money you gonna haul it or you're not, you know. Um, versus expediting, when you speak directly in our particular case, you speak directly with um, the customers themselves. The customers. We don't themselves. deal with brokers. We deal 
direct from shipper to shipper, shipper to delivery. So, um, well, let me rephrase that real quick. We don't, it's not that we don't deal with brokers. We don't necessarily deal with a load board broker which is a little bit different because obviously unless you are dealing with direct customer contracts that you're signed on to yourself you're going to deal with brokers to some degree however we're not dealing with a third and fourth broker and what that means is like like let's say if i'm the the company and she's the driver i'm not going to call up company a to put it on their load board and then another company goes to that load board to pick that load and then it gets to the driver that's not what we deal with. What we deal with is the company calls the company that we're leased on to, and then they immediately three-way us into the call for the load. So we're getting it directly from the shipper. All the information comes straight to us. We see the original Raycon. We get all that information up front before we even run the load, and then we get to negotiate for the price higher or lower. Depending, well, never lower, but always higher on what we want, the bonuses that's added on to it. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't, but the price is always worth it for us to run this load. Uh, now, one thing that's nice with that is that there's a lot less competition mm -hmm. in expedited trucking because mm -hmm. we are on call trucks, because we don't have uh, lanes, per se, that we're running, then... You know, when we look at, we, when we, we don't have a load board, we have truck position boards. We'll just All that says is when you get unloaded, what is the next truck that's going to be available in your area? The way that we run, there's always only one to two trucks in our area, and we are one of those. So right. we never have to worry about trying to outbid the next truck or the next driver or the next company with another driver we don't have to worry about that so it does make it a lot easier on us makes it better on our paychecks makes our pockets happier so the next thing that we want to discuss are application success tips so you may be considering well if i'd like to delve my toes into expediting because here's a crazy thing with trucking trucking is the only industry i've ever seen where you can apply on monday you will have a job ready to go to orientation by between Wednesday and Friday. Like, I've never seen that anywhere else <laughs> in any other freaking industry. It's oh, insane. Man. It is insane. So, mm. you may be considering, you know, what, how exactly does the application process work? You know, what companies will I be able to apply to, etc. So, we gave you kind of like a preliminary list of some hacks and some tips uh, to apply whenever you actually start the application process to apply for these expediting companies. Um, so for one, the application here is just like everywhere else. You just have to find the correct company. There are a couple things you can do to help out. Number one, obviously having a clean CDL, but that's, that's a given. The best thing you can do for yourself here is to already have someone that will apply with you so that you would all, what's known as an established team. Uh, what that oh, means. can I explain? Can I explain? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. So here's the situation with expediting versus general freight. Expediting is exactly what it means. So instead of, let's say you're a solo driver, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a, you have a load, let's say you're picking up, we'll, we'll even use the example of the load that we had, uh, the latest load that we had. Let's say you are over the road, you're picking up in Arkansas and you're scheduled to deliver in New Jersey. Okay. You're going to have about a two, I'd say maybe a, about a good two day um, turnaround. Would you say runtime? Runtime. Yes. About a two day runtime. Okay. To be able to pick up the load in Arkansas, drive your nine to 11 hours, get some sleep for 10 hours and then pick up, do it all over again until you reach your destination. Right. When it comes to expediting, the we reason. We don't get that. Exactly. The reason why you need a team is because that truck has to keep freaking running and so from arkansas to new jersey which is the load that we just did for example we had to pick up in arkansas i want to say 1 p.m in the afternoon eastern standard time because granted that's central and then we had to make it back here in new jersey by about 4 15 p.m that's almost a 20 hour drive so the both of us needed to run practically our full clock mm -hmm. in order to make sure that we got to the load on time but I think the, the payoff for that, because I really do enjoy expediting and team driving, especially with the hubbykins, okay? 
<laughs> I bet. Because, I, number one, I don't drive at night. Okay, like I have a specific cutoff. <laughs> She's a solar power the, driver. I do not drive when the sun go down, honey. Granted, granted, <laughs> I get all the sweet, juicy miles. Okay? <laughs> she will literally wake up and we are at our shipper destination because I'm going to put in that 11 hours. I'll put in between 7 and 9. 7 to 9, good solid hours. Bruh. <laughs> I wake up, I still got 600 miles to run out the load. I'm like, come on. Oh, I try try my best to make sure. I mean, granted, because you got to consider traffic and all that jazz, right? You got to consider traffic. I'm I'm keeping it funky. But that's essentially what you can expect is the biggest difference is that that load needs to be there on time. It's Mm -hmm. pretty much on call. So if you are on the clock. No, 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 no. Hmm? It doesn't need to be there on time. It needs to be there as soon as possible. As soon as possible. That's the difference. Because, yes, every load needs to be there on time. Every delivery has to make it. Right. However, in expediting, you have to get it there as soon as possible. Okay? And the more security that load needs, the less downtime that you have. Even and when I say that, it's like there are certain loads you run where you're not supposed to stop for the first five, six hours of the load. There are loads that you run where you're not supposed to stop at all. So you will literally get fuel before, just before you pick up and run that joint straight through. You don't stop, okay? Um, so that's really what the big difference is, expediting versus regular regular freighting. Mm-hmm. Why you need a team when you come here is because the truck don't stop. Right. So now, that being said, when it stops, oh, it's chill time. It is chill time. Is it chill we time? We had one load where we delivered to Hershey Park. On a Friday, no less. Golly, what a way to bring in the weekend. We got free tickets in the Hershey Park on Friday. Uh, chilled out, played, had fun. Then went to a truck stop, sat for the entire weekend, then got up Monday morning, picked up our load, and ran out. And we had another load where, where it delivered on a Thursday in uh, Atlantic City. Yeah. We got to sit there all day long waiting on them to break down an expo in Atlantic City. So yeah, and it, you know, it, it was it's it's nice. You know, when we when it stops, you got chill time. Yeah. But when you're running, you gotta run. That that's the big thing. So, right. That's true. That's definitely. true. Definitely. So uh, also another thing is before you once you have your teammates selected, which ideally is gonna be spouses, I we would never recommend uh, you know, a parent child or mm-hmm. roommates, whatever the case may be, mainly because you don't want to split up the revenue that comes to the truck. Right. Okay. Right. So have the income going into the same household, which is why expediting is so hard to get into because you don't see a lot of couples in trucking that are willing to do it together. Or at least I haven't seen a lot. Yeah. But it does make it better for you because for one, you get to spend time with each other. You don't have the whole not seeing your, you know, your significant other, not seeing your spouse for weeks at a time. And because you're team driving, you also still have that little bit of time to yourself so that you're not driving each other crazy out here. Yeah, I do quite enjoy that. I I got to be honest with you because I I enjoy as we've been together since we were high school, since we were in high school. We've been together since we were 17 years old, 15 years. Right. 15 years together, 10 years married, and most of our relationship, marriage and dating, courting, whatever you want to call it, has been us being away from each other Mm -hmm. for extended periods of time. And so when that happens, you get used to the times that you're by yourself, and Mm -hmm. sometimes you prefer those times that you're by yourself. So I actually appreciate the fact that we're not up each other's booties (laughs) <laughs> here in the truck mm-hmm. during the time that let's say he's driving i'm sleeping i get the bed all to myself <laughs> and it's a full-size mattress it's a full-size okay mattress. it is a full-size mattress like i know y'all oh. see the little area we're sitting in this is just the dining room table yeah okay this block right here is the bed and it opens up another half a foot into the bunk so full-size <laughs> mattress it is glorious yeah that being said it, it we're is. gonna so you want to have a team set up, an mm-hmm. established team. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to have all your banking information straight. So if you want to come here as an LLC, if you want to come here as a business, I would recommend that because they will pay your business and then you can pay yourself out of your business account. That's a whole other topic. 
we're not getting into that. But that's what I recommend. Don't we, have them pay you. On a different, on that's different, fine. Yeah. Don't have them pay you individually because then not only does it split the check, um, depending on whatever your percentage is, but it also it it just lessens everything. It increases your taxes and lessens your income. So right. it's it's not worth it. Have them pay you. Have them pay your business, and then your business pays you. It makes life a whole lot easier. Right. Um, you want to have as many endorsements as you can. Endorsements as you can. Every endorsement that you have on your license is a selling point for you to make more money. Mm-hmm. Think of it that way, okay? Mm-hmm. So you want to have hazmat. You want to have twit. You want to have tanker. You don't necessarily need doubles and triples, but why not get it anyway? Because you can always say that you have the experience to haul anything, so therefore you deserve more money. Uh, you want to have... Did I say twit? I did yes. say twit. If you can get it, grab your passport because... We do run into Canada. We run into New Mexico. Um, not New Mexico, into Mexico. Uh, so those are always nice. Basically, just have your ish together. Yeah, when you, you know? when hubby says have a clean CDL, don't ask about, well, what's your biggest thing with that? Don't ask about. Oh, yeah, the, don't ask about drug tests. If you can't pass a simple drug test, don't bother to apply, okay? <laughs> Go back and work at 7-Eleven or Kroger. Somewhere that they don't care if you doing drugs or whatever. Um, if you got a problem with alcohol, don't bother coming out here. Like, straight up. Kick all that off to the side because it's not worth it, okay? What you're going to do... And here's the thought process behind that. In trucking, you have a, uh, quote, unlimited earning potential. All right? Make of that what you will. But... You are not limited to twenty to thirty, maybe forty thousand dollars a year. Now, if that's all you need, that's all good. But you don't want to risk a six-figure job, hundred plus thousand dollars, hundred twenty thousand dollars, hundred forty thousand dollar job off of a joint. Come on, bro. Real stuff. Like, cut that shit out. We gonna we gonna tell you like it is. Right. We gonna tell you like we gonna tell right. tell it like a ti is. Okay, right. whether you like it or it, not. It's not it's not worth it. It's not <laughs> worth your livelihood. It's not worth your job. It's not worth your family. It's just not it's not worth it these days. All right. Uh, so yeah, have a clean CDL record. Um, have you you you're definitely gonna need ten years of your work history. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now. You only have to be 21 to do this. So if you just started working, then the previous years are going to be school, unemployed. You know, it's just tell it like it is, right? Uh, and then you only need a CDL to come here. You don't even need experience to get into this. You just need a team. There were companies, and we'll mention some of these companies, that was willing to take her on with absolutely zero experience. I'm talking... You just graduated trucking school today. They will hire you tomorrow. And they were going to let her ride on my six years of experience. Basically, at first, they were going to have me train her in the truck in order to drive. We didn't go that route. Okay. I sent her to school. She drove for a couple months. And when she started feeling like she was comfortable out here, I brought her out here to expedite. Because expediting is a lot easier than driving a semi-truck. So. So, last but most certainly not least, companies to apply for. I know you've been waiting for this. Mm -hmm. You can apply to Panther, okay? Mm -hmm. You can apply to FedEx, okay, for expedited. You can apply to a company known as Highfield. That's who we went through, Mm -hmm. which actually subcontracts Panther and FedEx. So, it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. And we'll And we'll get into a lot more detail as far as that's concerned. You can also apply to a company known as ES Transport. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're somebody who you have zero dollars and zero cents. You have a good, clean record and you want to dive into the trucking industry just like I did less than six months ago. Um, I would recommend that you start off with one of these beginner companies that actually allow you to, they, they put you through the training for you to be able to get your CDL, work for them the allotted amount of time, and then go ahead and partner up with your spouse or whomever, and then get into expediting that way. Exactly. The company that I went through was Schneider. Schneider, I have, I have to say, they took very, very good care of me. I started with them middle of January, 2023. Ended up getting my CDL because they had a four-week um, CDL program. Uh, passed it. It was felt like trucker boot camp, like no lie. <laughs> passed it. 
you know, I had my CDL by mid-February, started working for them by late February. Mm-hmm. I was with them a good solid three months. Granted, you're supposed to be with them for nine months. Otherwise, you got to pay like $3,000. But if we're comparing apples to oranges, expediting is, uh, you know, significantly better. So I decided to jump ship, go ahead and partner up with Hubbykins over here, okay? Right. So some other companies that are for super beginners, well, Swift. Swift, CR England, Knight. Prime, Prime Transport, Melton, oh, uh, right. Old Dominion, and like most of these are companies I've driven for myself. So like I drove for Melton, I drove for Old Dominion. Um, uh, I didn't drive for any other companies because I, I had already had my CDL. So, but I did the exact same thing. I went to the course, taught myself how to drive, and left for a better opportunity. Okay, she said earlier in the video that trucking is the only spot where you can. Quit one job on Monday, apply to another job. By the time you get home that afternoon, you'll have another job set up and good to go by Tuesday or Wednesday. That is very true in trucking. Almost every job I've applied to, there's no interview process for real. Uh, well, not, let me rephrase Not no interview process. This is not your standard interview process where right. you are dressing up, you're going in, sitting down, asking questions. Your interview process here is all digital. So they're going to pull your work history. They're going to pull your driving history. They're going to pull something called your clearinghouse. That is your drug and alcohol history. Okay. All three of those things is essentially your interview. So if you keep those clear, your interview is good. They may call you and ask a couple of questions. They'll talk to you like everyone else. Hey, do you have any questions about this? After that, you say yay or nay. Then they're going to send you an email with a preliminary job offer. You accept that. Boom. Now you're setting up your transportation or orientation. They're going to put you up in a hotel. They're going to feed you breakfast at the hotel. They're going to feed you lunch and or dinner at the trucking school. Mm -hmm. And we'll make another video on how to survive that because I've got some (laughs) tips on that. It helps you out significantly. They're going to teach you everything you need to know from A to Z on how to get into a truck safely. Not how to drive safely. How to get into a truck safely. What I mean by that is they're going to teach you how to get into a truck and drive. However, the experience out here on the road is what teaches you how to truly handle and manage your truck safely. So they're going to give you, they're going to send you from driving your car to driving a semi truck somewhere between four to 12 weeks, depending on the program, depending on how well you do, depending on on your specific advancement level. Um, And then you're driving and you have a guaranteed job with said company. You have guaranteed income with said company. And then you start to gain your experience and progress however you want to. You get to progress through that. Um, She mentioned some other companies that you can drive for. There are numerous companies out here that you can apply to. There are numerous companies that you can apply to with expediting. But you have to have a team. That is the primary thing. You have to have a team. Even if you don't have the experience for it, you have to have a team. All of these companies will take you with three months or less experience some of them will take you with no experience if you have a teammate that has some experience some of them will take you and your teammate with no experience so i think that's it that's it that's it if you found this information helpful be sure to subscribe and click on the little notification bell so that anytime that we drop Mm -hmm. another video you will have first dibs to the latest content tips hacks and information pertaining to thriving in the trucking industry that's right we have a lot of information coming out a lot of free information that nobody else is really trying to put out there so we're going to talk about it we're going to break down numbers miles lane routes all that stuff from the trucking aspect not from the broker aspect not from the shipper aspect from the trucker aspect because that's what you're here for as you can see zoe is trying to say hi to us hi zoe that being said we will catch you all next time bye